Good morning and welcome to the Cathedral Church of All Saints here in Halifax, Nova Scotia. It's officially summer and with summer often comes fog. So this is a Carl Sandburg kind of day for anyone that knows Carl Sandburg. The fog comes on little cat feet. It sits looking over the harbor and city on silent haunches and then moves on. That's our prayer. We're glad you joined us today, both in person and online. Our summer services will continue at 10 a.m. on Sunday, uploaded for viewing on YouTube and Facebook, with the bulletin available on our website under the Information tab. Also, Wednesday mornings at 7.30 a.m., Fridays at noon, a Book of Common Prayer Eucharist, and each day, Monday through Saturday, you'll find a short morning prayer service online by one of our deacons or lay ministers and a Wednesday check-in for announcement updates, a poem, a song, and a prayer. Coming up in August, a series of organ recitals, details coming soon. Tuesday of this past week was National Indigenous Day of Prayer, and a sermon reflection was posted on that day by Reverend Dr. Ray Aldred of the Diocese of New Westminster, who is director of the Indigenous Studies Program at Vancouver School of Theology. He titled his reflection, It's a Good World, and I will include the link to that video in the description below today's service. I received an update from Cynthia Pilikos regarding the fundraising efforts for the Say Yes to Kids campaign, which aims to provide the cost for children to attend the Ward 5 summer day camps in our city's north end. She writes, the generosity of the cathedral family and friends along with matching and leadership gifts from the Anglican Foundation, have the cathedral's Say Yes to Kids total at $6,230, and it may go even higher before we're finished. This total is more than double our original goal and more than $2,000 over our next established goal of $4,000. Thank you to all those who have supported this 20% of the total raise will be directed to the diocese community roots camp and another 20% to national indigenous youth ministries. You may recall a few years ago, we sponsored a family's hopes to come to Canada under the refugee sponsorship program and the Mando family was one of those. On July 1st, Canada Day at 3 p.m., Tamar and Maison will receive their citizenship at a ceremony to be held on the Halifax waterfront. Unfortunately, it's an invitation-only event, but I will put the link for the live stream under today's video for those that would like to tune in. Our best wishes and congratulations to them. I'm looking for some volunteers to learn the basics of how to record and upload our services here at the Cathedral. It's far simpler than you may think. If you have ever used Zoom or FaceTime or can send an email, you could handle this. Just see me after the service today or drop me an email and we'll arrange time for a tutorial. A diocesan youth conference will be held this summer, August 19th to the 21st, at Camp Mockingy near Windsor. This retreat style weekend for youth who have just finished grades 7 to 12 is a time to relax, recharge and reconnect. Registration opens shortly, so if you know of someone that might enjoy or benefit from this experience, please check the diocese website for updates. Halifax Regional Municipality will hold the annual Pride Festival running from July 14th to the 24th. The parade will be held on Saturday, July the 16th, and we'd love to have representation from parishes across our diocese. Those who are able to can walk in partnership and witness to proud Anglicans of Nova Scotia PEI. Information about where and when to assemble will be announced soon. And on July 9th, I'll be taking part in the 41st annual Proudy, a cancer fundraising event at Dartmouth College's Norris Cotton Cancer Center in New Hampshire. It is one of the premier cancer, cancer research centers in the United States. This will be the first fully in-person gathering in two years due to, the, due to the pandemic, and it will be my 17th year in gathering. 
And I look forward after two years of cycling 100 miles in circles, both inside the cathedral and around the citadel, to join with family and friends and go in a straight line. If you'd like to support this event, go online to theproudy.org, that's P-R-O-U-T-Y, click on donate, donate to an individual, and type in my name. Out of the nearly 5,000 registered, I'm the only Paul Smith, but there is a Paula Smith, no relation. Last year, the Proudy raised more than $4 million for research that impacts cancer treatments around the world. Those are our announcements for today. We now begin our service with the territorial acknowledgement. For those in-house, you will find that on page three. And for those online, again, you will find today's bulletin under the information tab. So as we gather in person and in virtual space, we wish to acknowledge with gratitude that we do so on the traditional and unceded lands of the Mi'kmaq people. We give thanks, thanks for this land and all those who have stewarded it, for their stories and for their lives, past, present, and future. We commit ourselves to prayerfully seek reconciliation, justice, and healing, that we might listen and learn to be faithful stewards of this good land and live in right relationships. Our opening hymn, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. is as high as the heavens, O God, your faithfulness soars through the skies. Your righteousness reaches the towering peaks, your mercy the depths of the sea. We shelter beneath your wings, we feast on the food you provide. We open our eyes to drink in your goodness, for you are the source of all life, and because of your light, we see light. And the collect of t today, let us pray. God, you set us free in Jesus Christ. Grant that we may live gracefully in this freedom, without selfishness or arrogance, 
becoming servants through love to the freedom of the gospel for the sake of your reign. Amen. And please be seated as we listen to Holy Scripture. Let us prepare ourselves for the word of God as it comes to us in the reading of Holy Scripture. Minds are open. A reading from the first letter to the Corinthians. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh, For what the flesh desires is opposed to the spirit, and what the spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you were led by the spirit, you were not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious, fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you, as I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the Church. Thanks be to God. A reading of Psalm 16. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other. All my my delight delight is is upon the godly godly that that are in the land, upon upon those who are noble among among the people. people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. Their libations of blood I will not offer, nor take the names of their gods upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because Because he he is is at my my right right hand, hand, I shall shall not not fail. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you you will not not abandon abandon me me to the grave, grave, nor let your your Holy Holy One see see the pit. pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore.
Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered the village of the Samaritans to make ready for him, but they did not receive him because his face was set towards Jerusalem. When his disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord. But let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> there is a song of the late great maritime singer Stan Rogers that sprung to mind in reading today's gospel. The song is titled, The Field Behind the Plow, and I've been humming it all week. It was triggered by the last line we heard today in the gospel, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. But that's not what I wanted to talk about. Instead, I want to share with you a demonstration I witnessed at a workshop conference on death and dying some years ago. One of the presenters began by placing a large glass punch bowl on the table at the front of the room. You will agree that this bowl is empty, correct, he asked, and we all nodded in agreement. He then produced a bag of golf balls and proceeded to pour them into the bowl. When they had reached the top, he stopped and asked, would you agree that the bowl is now full? And of course, we all agreed. Then he produced a bag of colored gravel like you would put in a fish tank, and he poured these into the bowl and the small stones nestled down between the gaps in the golf balls until they reached the bowl's brim. Now it's full, right, he asked. And as you can imagine, we were not quite so sure this time. Sure enough, he picked up a bag of fine beach sand and again poured what seemed an impossible amount into the bowl the tiny granules of sand filtering down into even smaller gaps and crevices. And now, he said, would you agree that we have at last filled the bowl? And I think we were all at last convinced that he was finished. It could hold nothing more. Every possible gap was now occupied. So he began to clean up the table, picking up the dust from the sand, took out a glass of water, and a pitcher of water, poured himself a glass and drank it. And then, 
he proceeded to pour the remainder of the water from the jug into the bowl. The water, of course, found room in the seemingly filled-to-capacity punch bowl. So what does this mean, he asked us. Well, it speaks of potential. When we think there is no more that can be done, no more that can be added to a situation, don't give up. There is always possibility. Those of us at the workshop then shared examples from our own lives of times when we had reached deep and found the resources to do or carry on or creatively find solutions when it seemed we had exhausted all possibility. It was a meaningful and memorable demonstration. But he wasn't finished. He concluded by pointing something out which at the outset I don't think had registered with any of us who were watching this experiment. What is also significant here in this demonstration, he said, is the order or the sequence. What if he had first filled the bowl with water, then tried to add sand, gravel, and golf balls? Now it wasn't so much a question of potential, but one of priority. The whole exercise is dependent upon placing the big things first. Priority helps define potential. In other words, we, if, if we attend to the big things, the little things tend to look after themselves. Some years ago, a friend of mine came to me all excited and handed me a book. You have to read this, he said. It will change your life. The book was a current bestseller at the time, written by one Richard Carlson, PhD, titled, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff, It's All Small Stuff. And in it, he writes, so many of us live our lives as if the secret purpose is to somehow get everything we think we need to have done, done. Often we convince ourselves that our obsession with our to-do list is only temporary that once we get through the list, we'll be calm, relaxed, happy, and content at last. But that seldom happens. Carlson's book is an interesting and uplifting common sense approach to life. But it struck me that it was also very biblical. It was the essence of Christ's teaching and modeling. Carlson makes the statement in rela relation to the busyness of our lives, the purpose of life isn't to get everything done, but to enjoy each step along the way and live a life filled with purpose and with love. Now, if I haven't lost you yet, this is all by way of an introduction to this morning's gospel. A gospel which, at its core, I think, is asking that very question of what our purpose and priorities are in life. What are the things, whether they be beliefs, attitudes, outlooks, behaviors, that are foundational for us? And what are the things that get in our way or distract us from keeping grounded or focused upon our goals or our potential? Today's gospel passage seems a rather harsh and counterproductive way of recruiting would-be disciples but it is best understood when put in the context of the events that lead up to it and in seeing what follows. This chapter in Luke's Gospel, chapter 9, is a turning point. It begins with Jesus calling together his 12 faithful followers and sending them out on their first solo missionary journey. He sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal those in need of care. He said to them, take nothing for your journey, no staff, no bag, no bread, nor money, not even an extra tunic. And whatever house you enter, stay there and leave from there. Wherever they do not welcome you, as you are leaving that town, shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. Move on, don't dwell on the negative. He sent them out not to worry about where they would go, no hotel reservations in advance, what they should pack, will it rain, will it be hot, do I need something in case I'm invited to a formal dinner, do I need sensible walking sandals and dress shoes? Don't worry about the small stuff, 
but focus on one thing, a big thing, to proclaim the kingdom of God, to proclaim the message of Jesus Christ with passion, integrity, and conviction. And guess what? They departed and went through all their surrounding villages, bringing in the good news and curing diseases everywhere they went. And they were amazed at the results. Potential was realized by being grounded in the faith of the one that had sent them, Jesus the Christ. Later on in that same chapter, they spend the day on a hillside as Jesus teaches and heals some 5,000 people who have come from every walk of life just to hear him. As the day gives way to evening, the disciples tell Jesus to send the people away so that they can go and find food and lodging for themselves. And Jesus turns to the disciples and says, no, you give them something to eat. And despite their questioning thoughts and looks, by this time, I think, in their relationship with him, they trust him enough to do whatever he asks. The potential to feed the multitude came by first believing in the one who was doing the asking. Luke continues this chapter with a series of teachings and healings and the account of the transfiguration where Jesus is joined by Elijah and Moses. They ask, do you want us to build monuments here? To which Jesus says, in essence, no, we haven't come to dwell on a mountaintop, but to return to the world below. And afterwards, he asks the disciples point blank if they know who he is. And Peter declares, you are the Messiah. And so now Luke tells us in the opening lines of this morning's gospel, Jesus sets his face to go to Jerusalem. Jesus uses the occasion to speak about discipleship and about the implications in following him. And as he often does, he speaks in hyperbole for emphasis to make his point. He says, be willing to let go of the past in order to vision a new future. There comes a time when you must leave the comforts of home, let go of the doorpost, head out down unknown roads, leave the dead to bury the dead. The lives of these disciples will be radically different than anything they had imagined. They will leave behind what they have known and done, what had been predictable, comfortable, and stable, and head off in totally new directions. Priority leads to potential. Jesus says no one puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of heaven. You have to focus on what's in front of you to keep the furrows straight. Look backward and you'll swerve one way or another. I think that's what Paul was trying to explain in that reading from Corinthians today. You can't go forward if you're staring in the rearview mirror. It is somewhat ironic that these same disciples did exactly that, though, in their despair and confusion following the crucifixion and resurrection. They looked back and resumed their previous occupations as fishers. It isn't until Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit empowers them, that they recall the bigger picture, their true priority, and renew the work of spreading the gospel of Jesus, the good news of the kingdom, all around the Mediterranean. And you and I are gathered here this morning because of their commitment to that mission. These verses in today's gospel should cause us to ask, what are the foundation stones of our life? How are our lives different as followers of Jesus than they might have been otherwise had we not chosen to follow this path? How has this journey of faith not only shaped our lives, our thinking, our decisions, our priorities, but those with whom we live? and move and have our being. Remember the punch bowl. The potential is realized in the priorities we select. The Stan Rogers song I mentioned at the outset, The Field Behind the Plow, is both a reflection on the hardships, care, and concerns of the individual farmer, the struggle and sacrifices to make ends meet, 
and to provide for those she or he cares for. But it is also about looking ahead and the potential that is derived from our efforts, even from something as simple as a seed planted in the soil. Stan Rogers sings, for the good times come and go, but at least there's rain, so this won't be barren ground when September rolls around. So watch the field behind the plow turn to straight dark rows and put another season's promise in the ground. Put another season's promise in the ground. Amen. I invite you to stand and join with me in an affirmation of belief as printed in your bulletin. That we worship one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in whose image we are made, to whose service we are summoned, by whose presence we are renewed. That it is central to the mission of Christ that we participate through word and action to rejoice in the diversity of human culture, to preserve the earth in all its beauty and frailty, to witness to the love of God for every person, and to invite all to share in that converting experience. That through the power of the Holy Spirit, the persecuted shall be lifted up and the wicked will fall. The heartfelt prayers and hidden actions of God's people shall change for good the course of human history. The ancient words of scripture shall continue to startle us with fresh insight. That God has called the church into being to be the servant of the kingdom, to be a sign of God's new order, to celebrate in every land worship which raises our hearts to heaven. That Christ, fully aware of our differences, prays that we may be one so that the world may believe. And to this we are committed, for the love of God, in the way of Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit. You may remain standing or you may sit for the prayers of the people. Let us offer our prayers to the source of all love and all life, saying, God of love, hear our prayer. God of love, hear our prayer. We pray for the church and for all your people, that we may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory throughout the world. We pray for Linda, our primate, Sandra, our bishop, Paul, our dean and rector, Helen, our associate priest, Ray, Heather, and Maggie, our deacons, and all who minister and worship, lay and ordained. God of love, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. We pray for the people of Norway as they grieve the shootings on Saturday during the Pride Festival. We continue to hold up the people of Ukraine and Yemen in their need. God of love, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially Margaret, Ken, David, Douglas, Ian, Barbara, Iona, Paul, Anne, Raphael, Stephanie, Beatrice, George, Richard, Leanne, Diane, Ed, and Patricia. 
Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them your saving joy. God of love, hear our prayer. Lift up the poor and the oppressed, the unemployed and the destitute, prisoners and captives, and all who remember and care for them, that your way of justice may be served. God of love, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others to your honor and glory. God of love, hear our hear prayer. prayer. We bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. God of love, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We commend to your shelter all who have died, remembering Gloria and Charles McGinley, that they may rest in your peace. God of love, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Amen. <laughs> And please join me in a confession and absolution of our sins. Holy God, maker of all, have mercy on us. Jesus Christ, servant of the poor. Holy Spirit, breath of life. In silence, let us confess our faults and admit our frailty. We confess to our brokenness to the ways we wound our lives, the lives of others, and the life of the world. May God forgive you, Christ renew you, and the Spirit enable you to grow in love. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Our preparation hymn is Living Lord of Love's Dominion. If you're using a hymn book, it's number 453.
the table of bread and wine is now made ready. It is the table of company with Jesus and all who love him. It is the table of sharing with the poor of the world with whom Jesus identified himself. It is the table of communion with the earth in which Christ became incarnate. So come to this table, you who have much faith and you who would like to have more and you who have been here often and you who have not been for a long time, you who have tried to follow Jesus and you who have failed, come. It is Christ who invites us to meet him here. And we have bread and wine gifts from God's creation. Eternal God, you are the strength of the weak and the comfort of sufferers. Receive all we offer you this day. Turn our sickness into health and our sorrow into joy. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God. Blessed are you, O God, for you have brought forth bread from the earth. Blessed are you, O God, for you have created the fruit of the vine. In the beginning you watered the earth, that man and woman might have food and drink. You gave your servant Sarah bread to strengthen her family on their journey, and wine to make them glad. You called Moses and his people out of bondage and refreshed them with food in the wilderness. You gave Mary and Jesus their daily bread to share, and here at your table you offer us bread and wine for the journey to nourish us as sons and daughters. And so with all our sisters and brothers, our siblings before us <coughs> and beside us, we praise, <coughs> we praise you for your unending greatness as we say, Holy. <coughs> Heaven and earth are full of your light. Glory to you, our God. Blessed is he, blessed are we, Blessed are all who come to your light. Glory to you, our God. Among friends gathered round a table, Jesus took bread. And having blessed it, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. In the same way, he took the wine, and having given thanks for it, he poured it out and gave the cup to his disciples, saying, This cup is the new relationship with God, made possible through my death. Take this and share it to remember me. Now, following Jesus' example, we take this bread and this wine, the ordinary things of the world, through which God will bless us. Lord Jesus Christ, present with us now, as we do in this place, what you did in an upstairs room, breathe your spirit upon us and upon this bread and this wine. May they become for us your body, vibrant with your life, healing, renewing, and making us whole. And as the bread and wine which we now eat and drink are changed into us, may we be changed again into you bone of your bone and flesh of your flesh, loving and caring in the world. Blessing and honor and glory be there, yours, Creator, Son and Holy Spirit, here and everywhere, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Look. The body of Christ is broken for the life of the world. Be 
these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. To receive you under my knees. When you say the word, I shall be meek. the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given for you. Marine, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given for you. Amen. Heather, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given for you. Amen. Heather, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given for you. Amen. Paul, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given for you. Amen.
Let us pray. Gracious God, in this meal you have drawn us to your heart and nourished us at your table with food and drink, the body and blood of Christ. Now send us forth to be your people in the world and to proclaim your truth this day and evermore. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. As you have been fed at this table, go to feed the hungry. As you have been set free, go to set free the imprisoned. As you have received, give. As you have heard, proclaim. And the blessing which you have received from God, Creator, Son, and Spirit, go with you all and with those who you love. Amen. Our closing hymn, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. gratitude for this moment, this meal, these people. We give ourselves to you. Take us out to live as changed people because we have shared the living bread and cannot remain the same. Ask much of us. Expect much of us. Enable much by us. Encourage many through us.
Amen. Amen. We need this worship to, to serve, serve God. God.